Welcome to InThisCornerTV.com. I'm Smitty. We're in Las Vegas. Fight week has arrived. Manny Pacquiao takes on this man, Ricky Hatton, made the second at the MGM Grand. First off, uh, Ricky's a little upset with me that I'm not taking him to the uh, Bon Jovi concert. Sorry, Ricky, you gotta you got to remain focused. Yeah, you, you look just like Bon Jovi. You have with the glasses on today, looking quite... Uh, quite smooth mate but uh, yeah uh, big fan of Bon Jovi but uh, there's only one my, man on my mind and that's that uh, that little fellow from the Philippines as they say now the preparation the hard preparation is pretty much done fight week has arrived where are you at physically and more importantly at this point for me mentally uh, I'm at the place I, I I really really hoped I would be to be honest with you I mean uh, Obviously, you, your training goes well, you're fighting a southpaw opponent. We've got the game plan off to a tee. Technically, everything's falling into place now. And uh, for my last hardest workout, just to, to know you've peaked correctly, you want your last hardest workout to be the show your best form. And that's what I've, uh, that's what I've done. I was really on form when we sparring. My timing was great. Everything we've been working on uh, tactically towards the style of my opponent has worked. So physically, mentally, I could not be in a better place than I am at the minute. Every fighter handles fight week differently for you, the, this final countdown as we, we lead up to Saturday night and May the 2nd in Pacquiao. What are you going to try to do to, to relax yourself this week? Uh, well, we just hang about with the, with the team, you know, just, you know, basically do what feels natural. I know some fighters are very superstitious and they have to have a set routine where they like to do this, this, this or this. I just do whatever I feel, uh, feel like doing, basically. And the main thing is... Uh, you know, my last, you know, sometimes your last hard training session or your last sparring session, if you're a little bit on the ropey side and you quite haven't performed, then the week of the fight mentally, you're not as strong as you should be. But with my last sparring session being exceptional, I, uh, it doesn't, won't take me much to stay relaxed now. I'm just, uh, I'll just be ticking the, uh, counting the hours down now. A lot of people have asked me how I see this fight, and I'll do a complete breakdown next week in a column that I'll do. But I think um, that you have to do three and a half things to win this fight one you have to use the jab that we spoke about the last time we interviewed you have to come behind the jab I think you have to go to the body early and often and I think you have to be tenacious ferocious and that other half of thing I think you need to do is perhaps stretch the Marcus of Queensberry rules just a little bit so that you make Manny feel very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, I think I agree with you. Obviously, a lot. Of, you know, I am a rough fighter. I am an aggressive fighter. Uh, the only thing I ask on the night, I've got you know, a sensational referee who's refereed me before. You know, whether the whether the fight is at, at a distance or whether the fight is up close, as long as none of us are fouling, just let the fight flow. I think Manny would want the thing, same, would have the same view of the fight. You know, as long as the fight is. But it's at a distance or close, just let the fight flow. Let the fans, let the fans, they'll come and see a fight, let us have a fight. But yeah, I think uh, I've got to get amongst him, throw him out of his stride. He likes to settle into a little bit of a rhythm with his hands and his footwork, with this shuffling in and out style that he has. And I think the sooner I get to him and start throwing him out his rhythm and let him feel that I'm not an Oscar De La Hoya who's left it on the scales, I'm not a Diaz, I'm not a Manuel Marquez. I'm a lot, lot bigger, I'm a lot, lot stronger, I'm a lot, lot faster, and I'm a lot more of a handful than them guys. The sooner I can let him know, I think the better, better I'll make the fight for myself. Would you say that uh, the Kosh Jazu fight, even though Kosh Jazu is a more of a counter puncher, and this kid is a, an energizer-type bunny fighter, uh, but that type of, of pressure and tenacity, you didn't give him time to think. I didn't know, and you know, Kosh Jazu is very, very patient. He's very, very good. He's very patient, cautious. He leaves back, you know, doesn't make many mistakes. I think Manny's a little bit more open and makes a lot more mistakes than what you think. He, he puts everything into that left cross. He backs out and sets himself and then comes diving in and running in sometimes. So he leaves himself there to be hit. So there's, there's, there's dangers and there's weaknesses on both sides, you know, when you're fighting someone like Manny Pacquiao. If he hits you, you know about it because he puts everything into his punches. But if he misses, he can sometimes leave him open. He's, he's not the most difficult fighter to hit. He's not the most agile. You know what? It, you know, he, sometimes he can fall off balance and stuff like that. That's what we've been working on. So I've got to be cautious. But uh, I think the key will be to make him miss and make him pay for him. You watched a lot of films of his fights? 
uh, loads of films, and I think uh, ultimately, I think size and strength and the Ricky Hatton who beat Kostya Zoo, I think will give him absolutely, you know, terrifying problems. But uh, I'm a damn sight better fighter than I was the night I beat Kostya Zoo. I'm jabbing more now, I'm moving my head, I'm showing more angles, and we scraped the surface in the Malinardi fight with how well I'm boxing. If one thing Floyd Mayweather Jr. taught me was that I have to go back to the drawing board technically, and in doing that, I'm boxing a damn sight better technically than I was uh, two, three, four fights ago. And uh, I haven't changed my style. I'm still the aggressive, tenacious, you know, 100 mile an hour, real handful Ricky Atom, but with a lot more poise as well. And all things included, along with being the naturally bigger man, I think May 2nd it will be enough. I know you um, have a lot of respect for, for Manny, but you mentioned Floyd a couple of times. Um, I think Floyd's a better fighter uh, than, than Manny Pacquiao. Uh, a, a bigger fighter. Uh, do you rate? Do you they feel that uh, this guy Manny is not as good as Floyd? Uh, well, it's totally different styles as well, you know. So the, you know, I mean, Manny has strengths in other areas and weaknesses in other areas. Just like Floyd, will have strengths, and you know, Floyd's work rate isn't as good as Manny's, you know. But you know, you know, Manny isn't quite as maybe as accurate as Floyd, you know. And Floyd chooses his moments more. Well, probably sometimes Manny can gamble and leave his chin out, you know. So these. You know, these these strengths and weaknesses, pluses and minuses in in fighting money like there's at Floyd. I think the big plus is, is that it's down at one hundred and forty pounds. I think uh, not just the Floyd fight. I think my fight against Louis Calazzo, I think showed that carrying moving up that extra seven pounds wasn't comfortable for me to to do. Um, but you know, it still took Floyd nine rounds to get rid of me. Louis Calazzo hit me with everything but the kitchen sink. He couldn't get rid of me. Kostya Zou couldn't get rid of me. I don't share Freddie Roach's enthusiasm that Manny's going to get rid of me in three rounds. I'm not saying he can't do it because anything can happen in a boxing ring, and I respect Manny immensely. But um, I just, I just think I've got the style to, to do the job, and uh, I know what I've got to do. It's been working in training, working in sparring. Just got to put it all together now, May second. We're not going to look beyond Saturday night. Well, maybe just for just a second. You're 30 years old. You've won some world titles. You probably accomplished just about everything you set out to in the sport of boxing. Uh, beyond this fight, why will you fight? Money, fame, legacy. You've got a great uh, son. You probably can afford all the Guinness you're, you're ever going to want. Why will uh, you continue beyond this two fight, which I expect you will if it if it goes well or if you're in the fight, and uh, I would expect you would continue. What are you fighting for now, Ricky? Well, a fighter can't go any higher than becoming the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. But the way I'm performing at the minute, I have such confidence in the way I'm boxing ability wise and just I feel like I'm really coming to me prime so as much as I've done in boxing I'd, I'd be an idiot to start contemplating retirement when I'm performing so well but like you say there isn't much more for me to achieve especially come Saturday night should have beat Manny Pacquiao and uh, you know I think uh, leaving a legacy I think I would have done that in becoming the best pound for pound Britain hasn't had too many pound for pound number one fighters so I will be leaving a legacy whatever happens Saturday night but should I win I think there's only a few more over fights that may interest me. One would be Juan Manuel Marquez because obviously he's a uh, he's number two, pound for pound. And one would be, yeah, although it being maybe I would have to move up to 147 again probably to try and put the record straight with with Floyd Junior. Um, but we'll have to get this one out of the way and see how I feel after this this fight, you know. But there's not much more you can do than become the best pound for pound fighter in the world, and in doing that, May second. Uh, I could certainly be able to retire if I choose to content them, but there's just one or two little things that I might want to do before I retire, but let's just get this one out of the way. And finally, look into that uh, camera and tell um, Mr. Pacquiao what uh, he should expect from the hitman on Saturday night. Uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of jabbing, a lot of head movement, a lot of angles, a lot of body shots. Uh, just something I feel that he's never had to... He's never He's never had to cope with in his career. As much as he's done in his career, he is the pound for pound number one. And what he's done at different weights, he hasn't fought anyone as ferocious as Ricky Hatton, as strong, as fast as Ricky Hatton. And uh, saying is one thing, doing is another. I believe I'm going to do it. No doubt in my mind. Mentally, physically, he looks ready to go. Best of luck on Saturday night. Stay tuned in this corner TV.com. We'll uh, catch up with the Pac Man and Freddie Roach uh, next week and hear what they have to say as we lead up to May the 2nd from the MGM Grand from Las Vegas, 
I'm Smitty. So long, everybody.